Best of r slash malicious compliance episode 34. This shorter than others but just a sweet. It was deleted first time. Now I live in the UK and we have sweets named Skittles. Rainbow colored sweets that apparently take after a fruit. Touch the rainbow taste the rainbow. And I love them. My favorite being the sour ones. Sometimes like all sweet brands they make limited edition versions. One being spicy flavors that when you eat them l. As well as getting normal flavors. They have a nice spice to them that comes out of nowhere. Me not generally being a huge fan of spice love them. Now I was with a friend at a bus stop waiting for a bus so we could go into town and play Pokemon Go sue me. When I see this mother, he be called Karen and her bratty kid. The kid walks up to me. Bratty kid. Are those Skittles? Me. Yes. However they aren't the ones you're used to. Bratty kid. Can I have some? M. No sorry they are spicy and I don't think you'll like them. Bratty kid. So. Me. You won't like them. Bratty kid walks over to his mum and she walks over. Karen. Excuse me L. Why can't my baby have your sweets? Me. Because they are mine and are spicy. He won't like them. Karen scoffing. Rubbish sweets can't be spicy. They are called sweets. Them being spicy is just stupid. I show her the bag that says sweet heat. Karen, I don't care. Give him some. Now I see my bus approaching and I think of a genius plan. I turn to my friend and grin. Me, sure you can have some. I grab him a handful and he takes it as my bus arrives. We pay for our ticket and the kid puts all of them into his mouth at once. A bad idea. I can only smile and glee as every skittle. A lot of the them is chewed and the spice is released. I'll never forget his face as the bus drove away. Thank you. Next. This happened a while ago. I was volunteering at a summer camp run for 5 9 year olds by my middle school. I was about 14 but this was my third year working at this camp. Most of the other counselors were college students. For the past 2 years, the camp director was amazing and created a whole book of norms slash schedules slash plans for camp. This year, we got a new director, who of course did not read any of the book. I was literally the only counselor who was returning to the camp this year. Everyone else was new. So the old director asked me to help the new one out. When I met the new director, who we'll call Anne, she insisted she knew what she was doing, understood the routines, and didn't want help, especially because I was too young to know what I was doing. Okay, fine. I left her alone. Anne was a nightmare. She yelled at the campers at least twice a day. I mean yelled. So much some of the kids cried and wanted to go home and never come back to our camp. She also yelled at the counselors for not knowing what was going on. They were new, of course they didn't know what was going on. She didn't bother to teach them or anything. Anytime I asked her a question, she got annoyed with me for bothering her. I was in charge of the art projects for the camp. This meant I independently planned the projects, made sure we had the materials, kept the materials closet organized and led the projects. This was my summer year in this role, so I knew what I was doing. I had a bunch of projects planned for the first couple weeks with clay, beads, and paint, but they ended up being too complicated and the kids lost interest and started arguing with each other instead. So as the summer progressed, I mostly stuck to paper and marker projects, origami, posters, drawing. You'd be surprised how many different projects you can come up with with just paper and markers. This kept the kids attention and was easy to clean up, so I stuck with it. One day Anne called me into the conference room she converted into her office, by throwing her papers everywhere on the table and not letting anyone else in. The conversation as follows. Anne, your art projects are too simple, make them more complicated. Me, I tried to do that, for example a beads project but it was too hard for the kids. They got confused and frustrated and didn't want to do the project. I told them they were welcome to sit out, but then they got bored and started fighting. The simpler projects keep them occupied. And, don't talk back to me. Me, I'm sorry, I was just explaining. And, you don't know what you're doing, you're too young to really understand. Here, do these projects instead. Shoved papers into my hands. Me. This first project requires reading and writing. We're talking about 5 year olds. Anne, just do it. I'll come watch to make sure you do. Okay. 
This project was a travel journal made out of a single piece of paper. They had to do complicated paper cutting and folding, which I couldn't get the hang of myself, not to mention read the dozen step instructions and write. But I had my instructions. So I gave 5 year old scissors to cut paper, a project I knew full well they couldn't do, and an hour of time. With my previous 2 hard projects, a couple of them couldn't do it. Now, I had 20 confused crying campers on my hands and 3 counselors in the room. We tried to help them, but they were bored and couldn't write. Chaos. Basically the counselors ended up doing the projects for the kids while half the kids cried and the other half played catch with scissors. The director watched this mess without even trying to help and yelled at the crying campers for not doing the project. Everyone hated that, so I assumed nobody would blame me for taking a couple steps out of the next project. It was a 10 step painting project that with some minor tweaks I made into a 3 step painting project where the end result looked similar. Much better. The kids could do it and actually enjoyed it. And it was Anne's project, so she couldn't yell at me, right? I did the same thing with the rest of her projects. The next week, Anne called me into her conference room turned office. Anne, you didn't do my projects. Me. The end result was the same. I just simplified them some after the travel journals. Anne, the travel journals went well. Me, the kids couldn't write. Or read. Anne, well, you should have helped them more than. You need to learn how to follow instructions. Me, I thought my job was to adapt the instructions to make them suitable for the kids enjoyment. Anne, just do what you're told. Here, do this project and follow the instructions to the letter. Me, if the project is the same. Can I explain it to the campers differently? And, no. This project was a 12 step turtle flower pot project. The first 5 steps were finger painting. The next 3 steps were a really complicated cutting and pasting design project. The final steps required actually filling flower pots with dirt and planting seeds. Neat project in theory, but I wouldn't do it with little kids. And looking at the instructions, the same project could be done in 4 or 5 much easier steps. But I did what I was told. I read the 12 step instructions to the campers. Nobody can keep track of 12 steps in their head, so they were already confused. One of the other counselors asked if we could simplify it. Nope. It only took 20 minutes before paint was everywhere. Kids were throwing scissors. Nobody knew what was going on. They didn't want to do this and hated it. Anne came down into this chaos. Anne, what's going on here? Me. The project was too complicated for the kids. Anne, well make it simpler. Me, you told me to follow the instructions to the letter. Anne, fine. This happened again with another project the next day, and the next day, and the next. One day, and changed her tune. Anne, what's going on here? Me, the project was too complicated for the kids. Anne, well make it simpler. Me, you told me to follow the instructions to the letter. Anne, look. Please just end this chaos. Okay, fine. Now that I'm not disobeying instructions, I can't make the kids suffer just to make them miserable. It took about 5 minutes to simplify the project and get the kids engaged. And just stormed off. After that, I grudgingly worked with her for 2 more summers. Until she left camp because she realized she actually hated kids. She never again told me I was too young to know what I was doing or got upset about my art projects. Thank you. Next. Since somebody told me this would be better suited here. About two years ago I worked for a bank, helping people over the phone. We started noticing a lot of scams going on with iTunes. People would call in saying somebody instructed them to buy $200 to $500 iTunes gift cards for various reasons. I answer the phone one day for an entitled man and this is how it went. Me. Hello thank you for calling Kernington. My name is OP. Thank you for coming in fully verified. How can I help you? Entitled. Hello yes I need you to unlock my card to allow me to make a big purchase. Me. May I ask what you're trying to purchase? I look through his transaction history and I see $2.500 charges that were declined and his card was flagged for fraud. They were iTunes gift cards. Entitled. Yes. I'm trying to purchase $2.500 iTunes gift cards. A man called me and told me I won a free trip to Disney. I'm going to take my grandson, but I have to send him $1,000 to pay for our flights. At this point my heart sunk. 
This man thought he was going to get free tickets to Disney for his grandson, but in reality somebody was taking advantage of his naive nature. I knew I'd have to be the bad guy in telling him it was a scam, but most people thank me for looking out for them. Me, so I'm very sorry to tell you this, but we've been receiving a lot of claims with iTunes gift cards, and that is most defiantly a scam, unfortunately, but that is why we locked your card because we're trying to prevent this from happening to other clients. The fraud department detected a scam and we locked your card. This sends entitled into a full meltdown. I had to turn the volume of my headset down from how loud he was screaming. In a store mind you. Entitled. Listen here you dumb bitch. Unlock my fucking card now or I'll have your job by the end of the day. Don't fucking tell me what I can and cannot do with my money you ugly cunt. Unlock my fucking card right now. I say they're in silent and shock. I was trying to help this man and yet he had the nerve to say all this. I told him that if I unlock the card there is a 30 minute processing time, and that he is responsible for whatever happens with his money, and that when this comes back as a scam we will no longer be liable for it and he will have to call iTunes. He agrees and I go through the process of unlocking his card. After he hangs up I make sure to write a lengthy note on his account about the ordeal, because I didn't want anything I fall back on me. About a week later I get a message from a co-worker in the fraud department. He asks if I have time to talk on the phone and I say of course. Fraud department. Hello OP. I have a gentleman on the phone that had called you last week. He claims he's a victim of fraud and that you advised him to unlock his card. Can you explain to me what happened? I was furious. You can be irresponsible with your own money. But don't try and blame me for your idiotic choices. Especially after I told you not to. I calmly explained to him what happened, and told him that he was more than welcome to listen to the phone call. I spent 5 minutes on the phone with him listening to the recording, and FD was practically laughing. He said thank you, you can hang up now and I did something I technically wasn't supposed to and said have a good day but I muted myself. He gets back on the line with entitled, frauds department, hello sir, entitled, yeah what did she say, that it was my fault? You need to fire her and get a more truthful employee. I won't stand for this. I want my money back. Fraud department. Actually so I reviewed the recording of the phone call and you gave full consent to unlocking your card. Even against my co-worker advising you not to. We are not liable for this as she stated in the call with you. If you wish to call iTunes feel free. Have a nice day. Entitled start screaming into the phone as fraud department hung up. Because I was still on the line I could hear him screaming into the phone as I sat there giggling to myself. I knew iTunes wouldn't give him any money, as I've seen it happen before with prior cases. Thank god I recorded that note. Maybe that will teach him a lesson on being nice to people trying to help him. Thank you. Next. I'm using my phone so sorry for any mistakes and bad formatting. So, the other day at school I put my backpack down in the hallways while I went to the bathroom with my friend after school around 3.16. The bell had just rang. Right? We came out and her bag was still there and mine was gone. I was freaking out. All of my stuff for school was inside that bag. I texted my mom what happened. She was pissed. I ended up finding it behind a door in the building. My mom told me always keep your phone and bag with you. So that's what I did. Once I got home, I had my bag on my back and my phone in my pocket headphones plugged in. My mom, put your phone away. Why is it always with you? And why is your backpack with you? You're going to spill something with that big bag on your back. Yeah, I spilled a glass of water and she got really mad at me. So, but hey, malicious compliance. Thank you. Next. There's a lady who used to live next to my college, but for some reason she absolutely hated the school. At some point during her life, the school tried to expand and asked to purchase her house and the surrounding neighborhood. This lady, naturally, refused to sell it. No problem, for the university. They just took the building they wanted to put on her land, and made it into a weird shape that cut around three sides of her property. Anyway, this lady proceeded to write in her will that the property could never be sold to the school. Instead, she decided to leave it to a local restaurant chain. Well. This wasn't going to stop the school. They offered to trade the restaurant a spot near the campus for the plot of land they owned that was now in the middle of campus. The restaurant accepted the deal, and since then has become a favorite among students. 
The restaurant did not technically sell the property to the school. They traded it. Thank you. Next. I worked for the same company that my father worked for. My father was the head of the maintenance department. I was just a technician on the main line. My father and my supervisor didn't get along too well though and sometimes that made my job very awkward. One day I noticed steam leaking from an autoclave. My supervisor had a rule though. The rule was that if I ever discovered something wrong with a machine I was not allowed to call my father. I was to report it to my supervisor and my supervisor would call my father. So I went to my supervisor to report that steam was leaking from the autoclave. The supervisor accused me of making a big deal out of nothing. His concern was that if he had to get maintenance involved then it would take all day to repair and it would delay production. Is it really that big of a deal? My boss asked. It shouldn't be doing that. I answered. Now my boss has this irritated look on his face and he's leaning toward me very confrontationally. How much steam is coming out? He asked. What? I don't know. A visible steady stream, I suppose. I answered. How much steam though? He asked again. Look. I don't know how to measure steam. What kind of answer do you want? You want the answer in milliliter, ounces? You want me to catch some in a bag and bring it out to show you? How do you measure steam? My boss did not like that answer. He told me to go away and not worry about it. A few months later the autoclave ceased to operate. My dad spent a whole 12 hour shift working on it. Since the autoclave belonged to my department my dad asked me about it when we got home from work. Did you know that that autoclave was leaking steam? I told him yes and explained why I didn't ever tell him anything. I told him that it was a stupid call by my boss and I've been waiting for this day so that the heat would fall on his shoulders from upper management because a whole day of production was lost over it. I knew that it would come to this. Unfortunately my boss accepted a job offer from another company two days prior to the autoclave breaking down so he never faced any consequences for making a bad call and neglecting the problem. My dad told me that the problem was that a gasket started to wear out and got worse over time. That would have been a 5 minute fix. But because the gasket got worse over time the moisture from the leaking steam got into electrical compartments and it made his job that much harder. It wasn't my fault for following orders. But I hope that my ex-boss gets his some way or another wherever the hell he ended up. Thank you. Next. A few years ago I worked for an internet service provider. And while I worked in the technical support department my job was strictly admin at the time. I worked the same hours as the day shift technicians and had to stay for the department overtime when required because I was part of the team, even when I had to just sit around because I had no tickets to work. The job paid well and the people I worked with were awesome so I did not mind all that much. That year in October they announced they would be doing a competition among the departments to bring up the dismal morale. It was explained they had our extra money in the budget for our department so they were giving us a chance to earn some of it. Several tasks were outlined and completing one of them the employee would get a $50 gift card. This seemed like a lot for a gift card but our new VP figured this would get more participation. Looking at the goals I realized quickly that I who was part of the team had no tasks for my group that would qualify for a gift card. I brought this to the attention of my manager well called Rhonda. Rhonda was not a big fan of mine and told me that the competition was for the technicians and she was sure I could figure something out if I wanted to participate. Okay. Looking at the list I noticed that one of the tasks was to fill in the email field on trouble tickets if it was not populated. This is generally something that is ignored by the technicians and the company had been trying to get people to use it. Thus began my petty revenge slash malicious compliance. I began to comb through the open tickets and fill in email addresses for customers wherever I could. October I started late and only made about $400 in gift cards. The next month I made $850. I was getting annoyed looks from the manager in charge because I was making more than any other technician. In December due to a storm we had a huge outage and hundreds of customers were affected. I earned $1,400 in gift cards. January they cancelled the competition. I wonder why. I found out later that any gift card over $20 gets reported and taxed. So yeah my taxes were a bit higher that year. But it was worth the look I got when the manager handed me a stack of $50 gift cards and I sat in front of her counting each one to make sure she did not short me. It was a great Christmas that year. Edit. Spelling.